Hi, what I have here on the workbench today are these Secure HT140 hot tweezers. These were sent in directly from Secure. I will leave a product link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. On this channel, I have reviewed quite a few products from them before, including this SI-012 soldering iron. Now, believe it or not, this one actually has become my go-to soldering iron. And the main reason is that the soldering iron is very versatile. It supports either USB-C or a standard DC barrel jack, and the user interface is super intuitive. Ease of use is actually crucial for a product like this. So hopefully, these hot tweezers are equally well engineered. Hot tweezers are designed mainly for SMD desoldering work. As for a one-off SMD soldering job, you can just use a fine-tipped soldering iron. For desoldering SMD components though, it will be quite difficult without a specialized tool. Some people use two soldering irons to simultaneously heat up both sides of the components and manage to remove components that way. I actually never had much luck with that method, except for larger components. What I usually do for desoldering SMD components though, is to use a hot air rework station. Now with hot air though, you will need to be extremely careful, especially trying to work on a densely populated board, as you would easily dislodge other components you do not intend to remove. So having the hot tweezers here should provide much better experience, and I'm definitely excited to try it out. The HD140 comes in this semi-rigid case. Besides the tweezers, you've also got a very nice stand. The stand is made from a piece of machined anodized aluminum and feels very substantial. It is quite heavy and definitely won't be tipping over. Inside the case, you have a 65 watts power adapter. The power adapter itself is very nice. You can see that it has two outputs and also it has this foldable plug and you can see that it can plug into an adapter for other countries. It also supplies you with a PD 3.1 USB-C cable. You can see that the cable itself feels very nice and is soft. It definitely feels like a high quality cable. Now let's see what else. Because the soldering tips are user replaceable, you are also given a pair of Allen keys and a few spare screws. Then it appears we also have a screwdriver inside here. And that's pretty much it. Like I just mentioned, you can also change the desoldering tips. Now, given that changing the desoldering tips are quite involved, you not only need to install the new tips, you also need to adjust and position them correctly. And the adjustment can be quite finicky, given that you have multiple screws to work with here. So in my opinion, the supplied tips are probably the ones that are going to be most useful. As for larger SMD components, hot air is the way to go. Now, considering this is not a cheap desoldering iron, the tweezers are actually over $100. So it would be nice if they included a pair of spare tips. According to the manual, the working voltage it supports is all the way up to 28 volts, and the maximum power dissipation is rated for 140 watts. Now, given the tiny tips like this, they probably won't have much thermal capacity. So the 65 watts adapter is probably more than sufficient in most of the cases. All right, let's use the supplied power supply and the USB cable and power it up. And to power it up, I just need to press and hold this button. Let's give it a try. And you can see it only took a few seconds before it reached the operating temperature, which is 300 degrees. And I believe we can cycle through the working temperature using this button here. You can see that 350, 400, 450, 500. And these are some of the default values. Now, for a desoldering iron like this, the tip temperature does not need to be that accurate. Now, the temperature increment you saw was at 50 degrees. That is actually sufficient for a desoldering iron as you don't necessarily need to make the tip temperature that precise because the whole purpose for this is just to remove components. Now let's actually use the 400 degrees, try it on a few components here. So here I have a circuit board. Let's see what we can do here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let's start with, say, uh, this capacitor here, let's see if we can get it in view. Yeah, you can see that, no problem. And we'll remove a few more. Uh, so, yep. Another one. And you can see that, 
it actually works pretty well. And by the way, here is a stand. Let me clean the tips here. And also, when you are not using the desoldering tweezers, you can place them into the stand. Very nice. Okay, let's work on a few more from the reverse side here. Let's see. Let's get this big one. No problem. And this resistor. No issues. All right, let me try another board. And let's try removing this capacitor here. Yep, no problem. How about something smaller? Let's try this capacitor here. Yep, no issues. And by the way, I saw a few people mention in Amazon review section that there's a voltage across these two sides. And let's actually verify that, as because if there's indeed a voltage across these two sides, it could potentially damage sensitive components. So let's take a look here. And here the meter is measuring voltage. So you can see here we're in voltage mode. Right now it's DC. Let's give it a try. We're not able to measure any meaningful voltage, which is good. How about AC? And you can see we're not able to measure any voltage either. So I'm not exactly sure what circumstance those people were measuring under. But clearly for this one, at least the one I'm using here, you can see that there is no concern whatsoever. Okay, so let's briefly take a look at the menu options here. To get to the menu, we just long press the right-hand side button here. And we can get in. Let's see here. So, yep, here you can set the working temperature and you can adjust the temperature step. And by default, as we mentioned earlier, it's 50 degrees, but you can adjust to anything you like. And here we have some, looks like the compensation and the temperature unit, pretty standard stuff. And then we'll have the OLED. Let's take a look at the voltage here. And by default, the maximum is 20 volts, and the maximum current is 3 amps. But I think we can adjust this. Let's see what we can change it to. Yeah, you can see we can change it to 28 volts. I think that's the maximum. Yep, 28 volts. And as soon as you change it to 28 volts, you can see that the maximum current changed to 5 amps. So let's actually verify that. To test the maximum power setting, I have changed it to the barrel jack connected to my Unity UDP3305S, as you can see on the other display here. So let me actually try to power it on to see how much power we're drawing here. You can see that briefly it drew about 140 watts. Let me cool down the tips. And you can see that we're consistently drawing more than 100 watts. So definitely the maximum power rating is accurate. Then let's actually use the maximum power setting, which is 140 watts, and now let's try desoldering a few more components. Now, sometimes it helps if you put a little bit of flux on the components you are trying to desolder. So let's actually take a look at this capacitor here, and I'm going to put some flux here. So let's see here. Now, remember right now the setting is 140 watts, and I'm using a external power supply to power the tweezers here. And actually, let's change it to 400 degrees. Yep, you can see that we remove that capacitor. And let's try this crystal oscillator here. Yep, no problem. And let's try a larger tantalum capacitor on this board here. 
Let me give it some flux. Yep, no problem. So, as you can see, the tweezers actually worked pretty well for desoldering. Alright, I just removed one of the heating elements. You can see that this one essentially inserts into the opening here, and we're secured by these three retention screws. And I said it's kind of finicky to position this, is because you have to first insert it, and then, let's see if we can do it, and then try to adjust the tip spacing here. So you can see, let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see that the spacing here is actually okay, but if you are rotating this, you will see that it's actually gonna be different. So now let's try to make the spacing correct. And then you can use the supplied Allen key to tighten these screws. And there are quite a few. So not the easiest to work with. Ah, there's another screw under the QC sticker here. And here is the circuit board. You can see that there are not that many components on this side. Probably there's going to be a microcontroller on the other side, I'm guessing, as that's typically how these things work. Now, I'm not going to remove the board from the case because you can see here we have some glue that essentially glued this board down onto the case to make sure that it doesn't wiggle around. And here you can see that we have this spring mechanism for the tweezer arms. And here is a DC barrel jack. You can see it is very hefty, and that is needed because the maximum current rated is 5 amps. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up this review. This Secure HT140 is actually quite good. If you do a lot of SMD repair work, this is definitely something worth your consideration. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.